Now you might be wondering why I want to talk about geography when I have a degree in math and a passion for technology. Well, when I was a child, my grandparents had a subscription to National Geographic magazine, and when I was about six, we wallpapered my room with those maps. Now, about ten years later, the game Trivial Pursuit came out, and all my friends were kind of surprised that I was so good at geography, and they always tried to block me from getting the blue wedge. Let's start today with the father of geography, Eratosthenes, a Greek scholar from Cyrene, which is now called Libya, who discovered a curious eyewitness report in the library of Alexandria. He read that on the longest day of the year in the southern Egyptian city of Syene, which we now call Aswan, that at noon the sun cast no shadow, even in the deepest of wells. By using trigonometry and measuring shadows, he was able to determine the angle of the sun at noon in Alexandria. He knew the distance from Alexandria to Aswan since many camel caravans had established a trade route. Using a simple ratio, he was able to calculate the circumference of the Earth with a margin of error between 2% and 14%, depending on which measuring system he used. There's some debate about that. Today we represent locations around the world using a series of imaginary lines called latitude and longitude. If we slice the Earth along the midway point between the North and South Pole, like I did with this orange, we get the equator. We call this zero degrees north or south, with the poles being 90 degrees north or south latitude. The sun is directly overhead at noon on the spring or fall equinox at the equator. There are some additional major lines of latitude called the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn, and the Arctic and Antarctic circles. The tropics coincide with the axial tilt of the Earth. The Tropic of Cancer is the northernmost point at which the sun may appear directly overhead, which is about where Aswan, Egypt is. At the Tropic of Cancer, the sun only appears directly overhead at noon on the summer solstice in the northern hemisphere. The Tropic of Cancer is presently at 23.44 degrees north. At the Tropic of Capricorn, or 23.44 degrees south, the sun appears directly overhead at noon on their summer solstice, since the seasons are opposite on the other side of the equator. The Arctic and Antarctic circles, then, are the furthest most points at which the sun is above the horizon for 24 hours, at least once a year, in a phenomenon called the midnight sun, which also appears on the solstices. We divide the Earth from the North Pole to the South Pole longwise, like I did with this apple, in 24 equal slices of 15 degrees, representing 24 hours in the day as time zones. The Prime Meridian was established at the Greenwich Observatory in London in 1851 by Sir George Airy. Within 33 years, the Prime Meridian was so popular with maps and travelers that it was established by International Committee to be the official zero degrees east or west longitude. It happens that at the other side of the Earth, at the Anti-Meridian, or 180 degrees, it's mostly ocean, and that was established as the International Dateline. Like most time zone boundaries, the International Dateline varies some, trying to keep related communities in the same time zone. I'm doing this experiment on the equinox, not the solstice. Therefore, I have to relate all my measurements to the equator and not the Tropic of Cancer. I have to measure at noon, solar noon, not necessarily 12 o'clock noon. I used weather.com to check the sunrise and sunset times and calculated the midpoint as solar noon. Since my location is observing daylight saving time, my solar noon is at 1.20 p.m. The 20 minutes is partially due to how far west of the edge of the time zone I am. I'm going to measure the shadow of a vertical object at solar noon and calculate the angle of the sun off the zenith, or directly overhead, using trigonometry. I'm using a simple wooden yardstick that I've mounted to a heavy box with tape and verified the yardstick is level and plumb. I then oriented it so that I get the biggest possible shadow. Now at various points around the target time, I measured the length of the shadow with this tape measure. The shortest measurement, according to this image, is a 23.75 inch shadow from a 36 inch yardstick at 1.20 p.m. on September 22, 2012. Now since I have a right triangle, the opposite side and the adjacent side of the angle I'm looking for, I can then use tangent for that angle, which is the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the adjacent side. I used a calculator to get the arc tangent or inverse tangent for an angle of 33.4 degrees. Now that's fairly close. I'm closer to 33.0 degrees according to my GPS. I used the Georgia Perimeter College website to find my distance from the equator 
which is 2,282.64 miles. Even though my shadow measurements were in inches, I don't need to convert miles to inches. Since I'm really comparing the ratio of 33.4 degrees to 360 degrees with the distance from the equator to the circumference of the Earth at the equator. I have the angle of the sun off zenith in degrees divided by 360 degrees in a circle. So I'm getting a fraction of a circle. That's equal to the miles I am from the equator divided by the circumference of the Earth in miles. So those proportions should be equal. So I get 33.4 divided by 360 equals 2,284.64 divided by x. Now I cross multiply to get rid of the fractions. So I get 33.4x equals 822,470.4. Then I divide both sides by 33.4 to get my calculated circumference of 24,624.86 miles. The circumference of the Earth is generally acknowledged as 24,901.55 miles for an error of about 1.1%, which is much better than Eratosthenes. But I'm starting with a lot more accurate information and measuring tools also. If you want to learn more about the equinox, check out this episode of SciShow and let Hank Green tell you all about it. If you want to learn more about geography, leave a comment below. I'm Tommy Howell. If you want to see more episodes of The Blue Wedge, click the like or subscribe buttons.